<laughs> Hello, family and friends. How are you? Greetings from me to you wherever you are. And uh, I welcome you to this live broadcast. Hope you're having a great time wherever you are. So you're welcome. I want to share with us what I titled Ma The Manna Prayer. The Manna Prayer. So uh, we try to use the Bible to show us once again how they use the Bible to control slaves, to keep us in slavery. And uh, many of us grew up in that slavery, although now mentally, without knowing how they really devised the Bible for, or wrote the Bible or compiled the Bible to enslave us. So you're welcome. And I encourage you to join me to always seek and spread knowledge. It's very important among us. So you're welcome. Uh, I will read from Exodus, Exodus chapter 16, from verse 11, about that's where manna is recorded in the Bible. Manna is recorded there in the Bible. I think that's the first place. All right, so before maybe the Deuteronomy uh, account, just repeating it, and also the, uh, the last place was, I mean, the last place they ate manna was in the book of Joshua when they entered the, the so-called promised land. Remember, it is all story. All those Israel of the Bible, Moses, all that, never happened. It's just stories. But since they use it to enslave us, we are also able to use it to liberate ourselves. Exodus chapter 16 from verse 11, it says, And the Lord spake to Moses. Nobody has seen that Lord, and nobody has, there's no record of that Moses existing at any time. That Lord, the Lord God in the Bible, anywhere you see the put Lord, is talking about the slave master, the slave master that gave us the Bible. God did not give us any Bible. The slave master gave us the Bible. The slave master gave us God. The slave master gave us Moses. The slave master gave us Abraham. The slave master gave us Jesus. The slave master gave us church. The slave master gave us Christianity. The slave master gave us Islam. The slave master gave us the religions most of us as Africans are practicing today as, as though our life depend on it. And the Lord spake to Moses, saying, verse 12, I have heard the complaints of the children of Israel. Also, that children of Israel never existed. If God had the, the complaints of the children of Israel in the Bible, why is he not hearing your own complaints today? Why is he not hearing all the complaints that people keep pouring out in church, in night vigil, in prayer sections? They are complaining. Complain about the evil in the land. Complain about the atrocities in the land. Complain about the hardship they are going through or they are facing. But God cannot hear it because the Bible is a work of fiction. He says, speak to them saying, at twilight you shall eat meat. That is the promise of God. You shall eat meat and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Meat and bread, that's what God promised them. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God. Not that you shall believe. So you need tangible thing to, 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 to convince, or not to convince you, to make you know there is God. It's not belief. No, it is not spiritual thing. He said, I will give them meat and bread for them to know that he is the Lord, their God. If God is your Lord, that means he's your creator and your owner. You don't supposed to be suffering. You don't supposed to be in lack and want as you are today. Do you get that? It is in your Bible. The people of Israel complained in the wilderness. In the wilderness, they don't have land yet. They don't have means of income. They don't. They are still journeying to the promised land. But between the house of slavery, according to Bible, to their promised land, God supposed to be providing for them to show them that he is the Lord their God. That's what God said. In the morning, he said, in the morning, I mean, in the evening, I will give the meat 
and in the morning I will give them bread. That's the promise of the Lord their God, who happened not to be my Lord, my God. I don't have any Lord over my life, and I don't have any God over my life. Verse 13, so it was that quails came up at evening and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay all around the camp. And when the, when the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance of fine and frost on the ground. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, what is it? That is manna. What is it? They did not know what it was. The, the, the order, the commandment is gather and eat. Okay. Because they trusted in the Lord. Because they believed in the Lord. And Moses said to them, this is the bread. You're asking me what is it? This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Which the letter says, Jesus is this bread of life. The bread that came from heaven. Okay. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded you. Let every man, let every man, not few of them, gather and share with others. No, not uh, one man gather and share with his neighbor or with his um, uh, another adult. That's why I keep, I want to open your eyes to understand two adults, then supposed to, no adult supposed to depend on another adult, especially husband and wife. You and your wife supposed to be working. If you have children, then it is your, both of you responsibility to walk and take care of your children. Not you becoming a react, not you becoming just sitting in the house doing nothing, and your husband or your wife is working, bringing the money. And yet you want them to follow the whatever rules you have in marriage. It doesn't work so. When I hear some people complain that um, uh, maybe uh, in America women are not uh, submissive to their husband, you know, they, they can tell their husband because... Those husbands are not making, uh, maybe they are not doing what they're supposed to do in the first place. So the woman is working, make, bringing the money home. Anyone that brings the money home must have, try to have authority over you that is eating it. That is simple. You don't expect somebody that is making money, bringing it home to be submissive to you. For somebody to be submissive to you, then you must be master over that person. And that is wrong. We're not supposed to be master over one another as adults. We're supposed to live as equal human beings, then taking care of our children. So you tell me, take care of your wife. Shut up. No, I don't. Take care of your husband. No, I don't. Suppose, I'm not talking about sexual or other things in family. But I'm, I mean, I'm like depending on somebody. Give me money to buy this. Give me money to buy that. No. Two adults are supposed to work. Do something. Learn some skills. You don't have to acquire a certificate or diploma. You don't have to be a graduate. You don't have to go to any institution of learning for you to become successful in life. All you need is skills. Use your brain and do what you're supposed to do. Get it? There are many la la lazy about graduates in the world today. Many unemployed graduates. They wasted that, maybe some of them four years, some of them six years, some of them ten years. Like in place of Nigeria, I don't know the years you can graduate. All you know, keep the, 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 the strike, you stay at home, maybe after one year or two, you come back again, continue. So, the Lord said that let every man gather it according to each one's need. According to each one's need. One armor for each person, according to the number of persons. Let every man uh, take for those who are in his tent. So every man and his family. Remember, in Israel, they don't respect women. They don't, get, they don't count women as human beings. They count them as properties. Okay, <laughs> That's why they always talk man. Let every man. How about man and the woman? The husband and wife going to gather it. He said, no. You know, I've been saying things about that also. Verse 17, then the children of Israel did so and gathered. In other words, God promised. Then God provided and the people of Israel gathered. Not they believed God will provide and they went and worked for it. 
as many people are doing today, you pray for something, for God to provide for you something, then you went out and worked for that thing, and when you work for and get, make that thing, you say, it is God that provided it. No. Miracle or the provision of God don't need your assistance. He don't need your assistance. God don't need your assistance to provide. If that God is real, he don't need your assistance to give you money. He don't need your assistance to give you a car. He don't need your assistance to give you a house. He don't need your assistance to give you anything. All he need is your obedience. Go and do this. You go and do it. Then I'll, uh, provided he said, go take it. All you need, go pay, go and take it. And that's what he said here. Let me keep reading. He says, so he said, then the children of Israel did so and gathered some more, some less. So when they measured it by armors, he who gathered much had nothing left over. And he, and he who gathered little had no lack. I remember how I used to preach from this nonsense. Every man had gathered according to each one's need. So well, if God is providing for you, God is supposed, is supposed to provide your need. He's supposed to be meeting your need. Not you saying, I am managing. Not you saying, you know, I hope things will get better. When you are under God's care, if God cares about you, if God loves you, as they said, so you're supposed to be having what you need. So let me skip to verse 26. You know the issue, like some people also maybe um went to see verse 27 he said now remember he said that they should gather it in six days but on the day of sabbath because the the evening or the day before sabbath they would gather double then on the day of sabbath they will eat it they don't have to go gather on the day of sabbath because they say it is their holy day so saturday is not day of work it's sabbath day it's not there for you to go gather anything you are eating between Monday to Friday, you would have gathered enough to have what to eat on Saturday. That was in the Bible, right? Okay, here I say, now it happened that some of the people went out on the seventh day to gather. They said, don't worry about it, I don't care. Moses said that, I, can, I cannot do it only since day. I can, I can do seven days, the whole day of the week. Hear what he said, but they found none because God was the one providing it. So if God did not make it available, they will not see it. How I wish God would do the same thing with sin. You want to commit sin after you have given your life to Jesus. Now your Jesus' blood has set you free. How can you see committing sin? How I wish the power of God will stop you. You want to commit sin. You don't see any sin to commit. That's how it's supposed to be. Especially now you say you are in Christ. So if you are in Christ and Christ has taken away the sins of the world, where do you see the sins you are still committing? I hope you get it. They got, on the seventh day, said, don't go on the seventh day to gather. You only gather for six days. Six days. Six. Six. Then after that six days, on the seventh day, don't gather. Some people say, no, we must gather. We are in the season of gathering. <laughs> I prayed, you know, I can gather. Okay, they went, they did not see anyone. They did not see nothing because God provided according to his promise. For six days, he provided for them, but on the seventh day, no provision because it's the day of worship. As they will say, a solemn day of the Lord. Okay, verse 28. And the Lord said to Moses, how long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? So the people of Israel went to gather contrary to God's commandment. Like if you read verse 26, verse 26 says, six days you shall gather you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. He said, on the seventh day, none will be there. But some people refused. They say we are going. And they went. They did not see anything. Just as God said. I have said certain things. But these two important things I want you to hold is this. Number one, if God promised something, it must be substantial. He will provide it. It's not something you believe he has done. When you have not seen it, you have to see it. If you believe God can solve your problem, you have to see God solve it. Not you going through saying, God can use somebody to do. No, God will do that direct. That's what is called miracle. Miracle is not try, try a lock. 
No. Miracle is complete work of God. His work is perfect according to the Bible. So, but see you, you are believing in the miracle. January to December, nothing shows. You are the one struggling, hustling. You know that, but you believe it is God that gave you grace. It is God that gave you strength. It is the, you don't need God to give you that. You have that strength. Natural. God did not give them strength to go gather manna. They have the strength already. Provided the strength is already in them, they will go and gather it. How I wish that God is true so that he can provide manna for all these hungry Christians, all these hungry believers all over the world that believe in God. <laughs> and you see, when they are fasting, like the Muslims, they store food somewhere and they say they are fasting. Immediately after fasting, they eat what they will eat in three days, just out of hunger. This is what is called divine provision. All that prophecy that we give you, this crossover you want to cross now is lie. Because they give you the same prophecy last year. You cross over from lack to prosperity, yet you are still living in lack today. But divine provision, if God say we give you this, God will provide it according to the Bible. That's why you call him Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, he for me. Honey, honey, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, he's getting this official for me. My God shall supply my me. Oh, Pentecostal. What do you mean, she man? <laughs> and I like those drummers, you know, those, those people that they can, they can make you dance very well. God, if God is your provider, it's supposed to be something you can hold. It's not something you believe in your head. It's not something you have in your dream. It's not something you have in your heart. It's something you can hold. Since you cannot see God, then see the miracle of God. If you cannot see God, see the works of God. Have you seen the works of God? No. The works of God you're claiming. This, the God made heaven and earth. He made the sky. He made the sun. He made the moon. He made the trees. I can see that. That proved the existence of God. No, they don't. The real thing that will prove the existence of God is that God to speak to you face to face. Is that God to provide for you something you need? Do you need a car? Can God give you a car? No way. It cannot. Manna ceased in the Bible. God provided manna for them in the wilderness, right? Then in Joshua chapter 5, let us read it and see what it says about the manna, how the manna ceased. 5, 11, and 12. Joshua chapter 5, 11 and 12. He, he said, and they ate of the produce of the land on the day after the Passover, Passover night. Have you started seeing the, 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 the flyers and the handbills or the crusade banner, you know, telling you it's cross, cross over night, that first December, so you cross over. They keep crossing over. They cross over to prosperity. They cross over to poverty. They cross over to prosperity. They keep crossing over back and forth. They never go forward. Always learning, but unable to come to the knowledge of the truth, and they ate of the produce of the land, no longer the manna from heaven, on the on the uh, on the day after Passover, on living bread and the parched grain on the very same day. Now this is the meal they prepare for themselves. It's no longer God's provision. So those of you that after you bring your food to eat, you say, God, thank you for providing this food. You are lying to yourself. You are an adult lying to yourself. You went and work, make the money or buy the food or you produce the food yourself and you prepare it and bring out the meal to eat. You are thanking the God that did not do anything, that did not give you that food. He said, it is God that gave it to you. Because they tell you, just give thanks to you. If you don't give thanks to you, you will get angry. Stupid God. So they eat it that very day. Then the manna ceased. Joshua chapter, chapter 5 verse 12. The manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land. If you can produce something, you don't need miracle. Mm. If you can walk, you don't need faith. If you can walk with your hands, you don't need God's assistance. You don't need divine provision. You don't need God to do anything. It's when you cannot do anything, that's when you need God to do anything. But God will never show up. In America, some people have what is called disability. 
if you're disabled, they, they find out you're disabled. Maybe you're working like this, or uh, you can't work fully. Okay, they might pass some money. They'll be given to you maybe every two weeks or every month. And some people are living on disability. And some people call also what is called welfare. They're not working, but they're getting paid. You see that? That's why we like America. Okay. <laughs> now, when they ate of the produce of the land, which they work with their hands, it ceased. It ceased. The manna ceased. How long have you been praying? How long have you been worshiping this God? When will you stop expecting miracle? Every day that you expect miracle every day. Expect miracle every day. Benny him preach that. Your, pro your prophet preach that. Your G.O. preach that. All these pastors, all these criminals, your call men of God, they are preaching the same thing. Expect miracle every day. Expect miracle. No! You don't need miracle if you are a full-fledged man like myself. You don't need miracle if you can walk. Man and sees the day they ate from the produce of the land. You have land and you are still praying for miracle. You have your brain. You are still praying for miracle. You can walk with your hands. You are still praying for miracle. Man of prayer. That's why I want to show you why you are praying that prayer. You are praying that prayer because you are a slave. Prayer is for slaves. Slaves who don't have land. Slaves who don't have, no, who, who, you know, don't, who are separated from their families or from their source of income. Then they are praying, waiting for the slave master to give them. Listen, my people, they, this, the, the people of Israel complained God gave them manna in the Bible, according to Old Testament Bible. Then in the New Testament, they brainwashed the slaves to pray for manna. When you say, give us this day our daily bread, you are praying for manna. The people of Israel did not pray for manna. They complained God gave them manna. But in the New Testament, because it is Bible is a story for slaves, they brainwashed you. They indoctrinated you. They deluded you to believe you will pray for daily bread. Daily bread. Where can you get daily bread? Eh, from heaven. And let us read it. Matthew chapter 6. In the New Testament. A book that have all the New Testament of God that doesn't change and that is true. That book is, is a lie. You don't supposed to have all the new. If God doesn't change, his word is supposed to be forever. And they don't supposed to be translating from one language to another. He's supposed to be able to speak to every language. But this one, they say your first Bible was, was Hebrew, right? Uh, Hebrew and Greek. Then translated to English. And then in English, you have several versions. And this word of one God, word of one God. <laughs> oh, God. I really hate religion, man. <laughs> mm. There is something I will funnily make, uh, mention here for you to see. See Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Jesus said, In this manner, therefore pray. <laughs> manner. <laughs> manner. Old Testament manner was M A N N A. But the New Testament is manner. M A N N E R. Manner. It's talking about manner, but you don't know the connection. <laughs> because it may, I'll show you the connection now. He said, In this manner. Oh, you want manna. You want miracle. You want God to provide. He said, then pray. Let's go through what they call the lost prayer to show you it is for slaves. It is not for the, for the sons. It's not for the master. It's for the slave. He asked the slave to pray after this manner. This is how you should pray. Our father in heaven, not our father on, on the earth. Have you seen the Father? No, he's in heaven. Amen. Our Father in heaven. <laughs> Fuck that, our Father in heaven. Thunder scatter down our Father in heaven. <laughs> Let that thunder kill that Father. He's useless. The Father that we watch children rape, watch children molested, watch people, innocent people killed. Let thunder scatter that Father in heaven. Tell him I said so. <laughs> He said, he said, why are you talking like that about God? Are you God I'm talking about? Are you our Father in heaven? If you are not, shut up. 
let the our father in heaven speak for himself you believe he can send thunder or let him know he cannot i'm the one that can send thunder <laughs> let thunder scatter the, yeah, it, it, it is done go to heaven and see say our father in heaven hallow be your name what is his name what is the name of this your father in heaven the father you have not seen hiding himself from his children even your mother don't know that you are one you're calling your father you don't know your father in heaven your mother don't know that father in heaven ask your mother to show you your real father in heaven <laughs> the one that impregnated her for her to say you have a father in heaven you have to know <laughs> <laughs> your father, your father, man, on your mother, but God uh, over overtake your father and impregnated your mother. Then now you can say, "I'm a child of God, my father in heaven." Hallow be your name. And when you read your Bible, you say his name is the Lord, slave master. No name. The God that has no name is useless. <laughs> your father in heaven has no name. You are the one giving him name. His name is Yahweh. His name is Jehovah. Yahweh. Means the Lord. Jehovah means the Lord. That's what it's not name, it's title. So what is the name of your God? You can't see God, you don't know his name. You start saying, God is this, God is that, God is Adonai. God, um, Adonai is also, I think he means Lord. As Igbo people, or uh, Africans, they can give God names in their language, man. <laughs> Even the chief tassi title that people used to take, people are not giving it to God, you know. <laughs> You are oh, oh my Joe, this you are that. They pick all the no, if you listen a bit to their music, you see the nonsense name that give it to this God. They have not seen. He said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. The people that ask you to pray this prayer is your slave master. They took your kingdom, they destroyed your kingdom, and asked you to be praying for an imaginary kingdom to come. As many preachers have tried to interpret and apply, they, you know, you mean the rule of God. Fuck that. Which mean, what do you mean the rule of God? You said the earth is the laws. If he's the Lord, the owner of the earth, his rule is here already. He said it is his will that will be done. And you are still praying, let my father in heaven, thy kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Which kingdom are you talking about? Because that kingdom does not exist. That heaven does not exist. That kingdom does not exist. That's why you cannot see that God. They brainwash you to be praying as slave, praying for daily bread. The people that ask you to be praying for this daily bread, the people that ask you to, for the pray, for, uh, to be praying for this imaginary kingdom to come, they build their own kingdom, they destroy your own kingdom. And they, ask, they, they have reservoir where they store all the riches, all the good things, even food. And you see Africa stay praying. Every day they're praying. In their government houses, they're praying. Everywhere they're praying. And the people that ask them to do that don't pray. They only pray to show public. Like they say, eh, Trump is hosting, a, is he praying and fasting stuff? The photo, the photo ops. He's going to mosque to pray. He's going to church to pray. Nonsense. What has prayer done for you Africans? Nothing. What has God done for you, Africans? Nothing. What has Jesus done for you, Africans? Nothing. But you keep praying. Man must have religion. Fuck that. Man must believe in something. Fuck that. No. Man must know, not believe. That's why you have brain. You don't have brain to believe things. You have brain to know. You judge things. You make decisions as a man. You find yourself in the situation you don't like, then you think and make decision. You have the power to judge the situation you are in and you have the power to change it. They ask you to pray for daily bread and rest on Sunday. He asked them, six days, go and gather, not go and walk. No, they went and gathered six days. On the seventh day, they rested. But now you, you walk also Monday to Saturday. On Sunday, you went to church. You are praying for daily bread. And you, didn't, you go out not to gather. You go out to walk. You walk for the daily bread. You did not gather. You walk for it. These people of Israel did not walk for the daily bread. They went and gathered. Then after you gather, you, you walk for it. You say, oh, God has made me to gather it. Okay, Sunday. Sunday that you're supposed to have rest, you still go to church walking. You're working for that man of God. Everyone that goes to church is working for the man of God, the owner of that church. 
whoever or maybe one person or people that run that church they are the ones you are working you are not working in the vineyard of any god or any lord you are working in the vineyard of your fellow man sons of solomon chapter one verse six they want you on sunday they don't want you to work on your own in your own vineyard but in their own vineyard because they tell you it belongs to god it's the vineyard of the lord and some of you even work some days of the week for them free of charge but you hope you are going to heaven that does not exist because you have prayed our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come is not coming jesus is not coming no kingdom is coming no heaven is coming this is your world this earth is your world this is where this is your home your eternal home hear what he say your kingdom come your will be done no it is your will that's supposed to be done not the will of any god the god you have not seen you don't need his will let your own will be done what do you want live your life oh man at my age i i, I have decided that nothing will make me unless i decide so to not be a man of my world and everyone around me is seeing it you ask me for money do you believe in god you say yes i'm not giving it to you even if i have abundance i can give it to anyone i want but if you tell me you believe in god i don't want to give you money to break god's command god's promise over your life god say he will provide for you let that god provide for you you don't take from me and say god have provided it no unless you tell me that i am the provider of course you acknowledge that and tell me god is not your provider okay i will give it to you but you insist I, i'm not it's not what i'm just saying i've done it my family can testify to this you say you believe in god okay let god help you it's also in your bible if you say i am sting, uh, i am stingy or i don't want to give how about your god almighty what is stopping him from giving to you he's supposed to provide all your need not you going to any man to help you or to give to you verse he said your will be done on earth as it is in heaven what is the will of god in heaven you don't know the will of god in heaven is defeat <laughs> god cannot kill satan that is the will of god in heaven they say satan fought there with his angel god cannot defeat to defeat his daily chase him down to the earth that's why they ask you to cast out devil you just be like cast devil you can't deal with the devil just cast him out <laughs> nonsense your will be done on earth no it is your will that will be done on earth Learn from the Chinese, learn from the Japanese, learn from the Americans, learn from the Europe, I mean the Europeans. It is not the will of God they are doing, they are doing their own will. What benefit them? Africans are still praying and waiting for God's will to be done. God is coming, Jesus is coming. One day he will touch our leaders, they will behave themselves. One day he will touch our leaders, they will begin to care for the poor. Fuck that. That God does not exist, cannot touch anyone. You cannot touch the mosquito that is sucking your blood and giving you malaria, but you believe we will touch your presidents and your governors to do good and no, you are the one that will rise up and demand your will to be done. And go ahead and do that. Verse 11, that is the killer. He said, give us this day our daily bread. Have you seen anyone that God give his daily bread at least for one day? No. That is the slave's prayer. The slave master give them their daily bread. They don't have their own bread. They don't provide for themselves. It is the slave master that provides for them. It is time you grow up, my people. You are the one that's supposed to go making your own bread, not your daily bread. The bread that can stay with you all the rest of your life, you can make it. Stop praying for daily bread, Africans. And you are passing it down to your children that pray that living like slaves, praying the slave prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. The last prayer. You see, in churches, some, some churches, before they close service, they said, uh, the last prayer. After the last prayer, they say, let's share the grace. <laughs> Which grace are you sharing? You are sharing this grace. Anytime you say, let us share the grace, you're just sharing this grace. That's it. That's why you come out from that church. You suffer more than those people that did not go to church. And ask yourself why the rich ones are not always in your church. They're only in the church when they are in town. 
when they go out there pursuing contract, you want them to come on Sunday morning and be said, when they know they can give the pastor a check and the pastor will pray for them all the days of their life. <laughs> it is impossible. If, if you miss your service, the pastor will call you on the phone and say, what happened? Oh, I, I overslept. He said, don't let the devil take it. <laughs> he don't say that to the rich ones. He said, oh, uh, where are you, brother? I didn't see you in the service today. Oh, I went for that contract. Oh, the Lord will make it work. The Lord will... <laughs> Bad people, criminals, all of them. All of them. Because it's the rich that, that is giving them what they need. They're only using you to make also the rich believe, okay, God is here. You know, we can, okay, God is here. God is not there. It's business. All right? Hear what he said again. And we and forgive us our debts. What is your debt? Who put you in that debt? Any debt you are in, you put yourself. But religion make you claim the debt you don't know, you don't own. Adam committed sin, according to Bible. They say it, it, it came on you. He said you are a sinner because of the sin of Adam. And you are praying, forgive us. Oh, which debt? I don't owe anyone there. If I owe, you know, I agree to pay. And I will pay as I agree. I owe student loan in America and I'm still paying it. Every of my every, every month I pay my, my 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 loan. If I don't pay it, you know what they will do now. They will go to my bank and take it by force. <laughs> I fight for tasks, they take the money. You don't, no matter you cannot stop it. <laughs> so you have to strike deal and be paying your debts. If you owe debt, you are the one that owe, you have to pay it. You say forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors this is why they kill us with religion we believe we can offend people and ask for forgiveness they forgive us we continue people keep asking me that at work they say what do you mean what if somebody offended you can't forgive us I, I don't practice forgiveness if we all we embrace fairness no there is no need for sin and forgiveness sin is imaginary thing they made up in religion and that is why you see people doing what they don't supposed to do, offending others instead of treating people as themselves. Because in their conscience, in their conscious mind, they already believe, they believe that when they do something, they will ask for forgiveness. And you must forgive. If you don't forgive, God will not forgive you. Fuck that God. Fuck forgiveness. Fuck sin. If you offend me and don't forgive people, no, you have to face the consequences. <laughs> don't ask me for forgiveness. So don't sin. Period. What do you call sin? He said, and do not lead us into temptation. Which temptation? Who put the temptation there? A silly God created man in his own image, planted a garden, and put temptation in the middle of the garden. And you say that God is wise. You brought serpent into your house full of your children. You put it in the middle of the house. He said, children, don't go close. This serpent will bite. Will you do that? That's exactly what that God did. And many of you still believe that nonsense. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. Why are you asking him to not lead you into temptation? Is he stupid? Is he blind? Can't he see this temptation? If it's the, your father leading you, your father leading you, maybe you remember when they used to drag you to church? Have they dragged you into, into, <laughs> into any pit? No, they walk through. They, they make sure you walk in the, right, in the right path. And you are praying to that silly God to not lead you into temptation. Quit temptation. Quit temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. Who made the evil one? You are praying to the evil one to deliver you from the evil one. You see why it will never work. God is the evil one you are praying to. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 7. And Isaiah chapter 54 verse 16. Prove to you that God is the evil one. Sending evil people to do evil things. And you are asking the evil one to, not, to deliver you from the evil one. It will never happen. I hear what this criminals that gave you this lost prayer put they said for yours is the kingdom which kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen they put amen there our god <laughs> the god our ancestors made up amen 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 is god of egypt is <laughs> egyptian god 
<laughs> the God of the sun, and they stole it. I'm happy. Say amen. Okay, you say amen. It shows, it shows you the root of your religion, where they came from, from Egyptian mythology. That's where it came from. That's why you end your prayer with amen. There's no kingdom that belongs to any imaginary God. It belongs to man. There's no power that belongs to any imaginary God. It belongs to man. There's no glory that belongs to any imaginary God. It belongs to us. You must be stupid to be giving your glory to imaginary God. It, you'll be stupid to submit your power to imaginary God. You, you, you must be stupid to let your kingdom be under the control of imaginary God. What happened to your brain, Africans? Stop praying the manner prayer. It is time you use your brain and use your hands and make your life better. Walk. The Lord's prayer is for slaves wishing for, be for, wishing for a better life or better things from the slave master instead of them working for it. You can walk and make things. You can walk and do other things. Stop in any God. They that wait upon the Lord that shall renew their strength is a lie. I am not among those that wait on the Lord to come and renew their strength and help them do anything or save them. No, I am among the work nation. People that use their brain and use their hands to make things happen. They save themselves. They help themselves. That is where I belong. It is time you wake up, my people, and stop being dummy for this God that does not exist. They lie to you that the people of Israel, the people of Israel, were slaves in Egypt. It never happened. It never happened. They lie to you with that to make because they made you slaves. Oh, you are a slave because you know the people of Israel were slaves. Then, then you see some Africans claiming that they are Israelites, so they are said to be slaves. We are the Hebrews. We are the Jews. Our brothers sell us into slavery. Fools. Africans never sell their brethren into slavery at any time in history. They never. It is lie they put there because they made you slave. They lie to you that the people of Egypt, the black people, Africans enslaved the people of Israel. Show me that Israel. The Israel you have today is not the Israel of the Bible. This is what you have today started in 1948. Do your own research. Egyptians never enslaved Israelites. Egyptians saved the Israel. Even your Bible shows that. When hunger wanted to kill Abraham, he ran to Egypt. That's where he became rich. Read your Bible very well. Egypt is the holy land, the first holy land in the whole world. When Moses stepped in that land, God said, remove your shoes. Oh, this land is holy. They have God that is above me. It's holy. <laughs> remove your shoes for them. <laughs> he has to remove his shoes to connect to, him, to people of his Egypt. You're talking of is Jerusalem being holy land. Fuck that. Israel. Fuck that. They are, not, they are corrupt. You see, they take other people's land. That's corruption. They can never be holy. Israel can never be holy land. It's a bloody land. Are they still not killing today? The one they made up. You say Mecca. Nonsense. Arabs. They are the ones that came and, uh, and uh, defeated Israel, Egypt and all that. They are the first ones to enslave Africans. And you say you are going to Mecca. Uh, is this Saudi Arabia, Holy Land or what, wherever it is? Because they destroy your own Holy Land, Africans, and give you these fake Holy Lands. But your own land is holy. How about Moses? It was in Egypt that Moses learned the wisdom he used. You said Moses married an well, Ethiopian woman, right? When his father-in-law saw how he was not able to, 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 uh, to control the people, he sat him down. Africans are the savior of the world, not God, Yahweh, not Jehovah, not Jesus, not Allah. You say Jesus is your Lord. Somebody said, uh, I, I, I believe in Jesus, but I don't believe in Jehovah. I say, see stupid ten people are these black people. <laughs> it's the same shit. <laughs> you know, Jesus, you're talking about. They say Herod wanted to kill him and his parents. Their God said, run to Egypt. Oh, that's the only place in the world. That's 
because where they have the true God, the original God, they made up Egypt. And still today, you see many Africans hanging on that useless God of the Bible, the stupid God of the Bible, the powerless God of the Bible, the God that cannot help you, that cannot save you. And yet you believe that God can. He cannot. You can save yourself. Stop praying the manna prayer. It is time you walk. You can have more than daily bread. Okay? Don't let them keep limiting you. Every day is supposed to be the day of work and rest. Not you working for six days and having one day as well, unless you are a slave. That's how they treated slaves. In Igbo tribe, where I came from, we have four market days. We work all days. Even the market day, you know, you just go and do little work or maybe you have something you want to sell in the market and come and sell it. We work every day. That's how it's supposed to be. Night and day. They are the work and, and, and rest. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how people say, oh, one body come in in body. That's when we realize that's evening time. You walk in from morning to afternoon. Then it has you on wogi. Then in the evening you come out and enjoy yourself with your family and friends. That simple life we were living before these evil ones came, invaded, killed, deceived, raped, destroyed, you know, enslaved us. Now we call it colonization or colonialism. It is time for us to wake up Africans to know that the manner prayer. It's not for us. We are kings and queens. We are gods and goddesses. If you know what I mean, I don't mean deities or something to worship. No, we have the will and the power to make our own judgment and do our own works. Thank you for listening. And please keep it up. Do your own research and keep spreading the knowledge without fear, without faint, and without favor. Peace. Is it done?